Greetings from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Cory, Pennsylvania. We're glad that you've joined us this morning, January 3rd, 2021. Uh, this is an uploaded video, so feel free to enjoy it at your leisure. And we hope that you had a happy and safe Christmas and New Year's. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name, Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his only son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, let us join together in singing our first hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God gives the gift of Christmas, born, crucified, and risen for all. O come, O come, Emmanuel, fill the whole world with heaven's peace. God gives us gifts of the Spirit for growth and life, for teaching and healing, for loving, giving, and caring. Love came down at Christmas. Love was born at Christmas. O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. O come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem. O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray our prayer of the day together. 
Almighty God, you have filled all the earth with the light of your incarnate word. By your grace, empower us to reflect your light in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the 31st chapter of Jeremiah. For thus says the Lord, Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them the blind and the lame, with those with child and those in labor, together. A great company they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water, in a straight path in which they will not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him, and will keep him as a shepherd a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob, ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from the hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young and the flock and, of the, and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them. I will give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness. And my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. Here ends our first reading. Our psalm is Psalm 147. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your children within you. He grants peace within your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters frost like ashes. He hurls down hail like crumbs. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob his statues and ordinances to Israel. He has not dealt with us any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord. Our second reading comes from the 13th chapter of Ephesians. Blessed be the God of, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel, and will so that we who were the first to set our hope in Christ might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption, as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. Here ends our second reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Open our hearts to hear your word. In the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, 
and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become the children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From this fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today I thought I would start with a story of a woman who talked about how her husband was wonderful with their baby daughter, but oftentimes he would turn to her for advice. Recently she was in the shower and he poked his head in to ask, what should I feed Lily for lunch? That's up to you, she replied. There's all kinds of food. Why don't you pretend like I'm not home? A few minutes later, her cell phone rang. She answered it to hear her husband saying, Yeah, hi, honey. Uh, What do you think I should feed Lily for lunch? Family is fun. Last week, we chatted a bit about how Jesus won our redemption by becoming one of us, by walking our journey so that he might better understand us and we him. Today, I want to walk that idea a little bit further with some of Paul's words in Ephesians. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In him we have the redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished. You know, I thought about this idea of adoption. And I did a little research, and probably not enough to speak on this coherently. But apparently, in Jewish traditions, especially at Jesus' time, there was a lot of issues with adoption. Issues that dealt with cleanliness, bloodlines, birth mother, was she Jewish? The father, was he Jewish? If the child was born of Gentile parents, then there are special circumstances and things that must be done. While at the same time, while Israel was occupied by Rome, there were different traditions about adoption in the Roman Empire. When a child was born, the parents could see, could, I'm sorry, the parents could choose to keep it or to disavow it. But when a child in Rome was adopted, The child was chosen by the parents. The parents wanted the child and adopted the child. And in Roman law, that child could not be relinquished or disavowed. I'm sure there's much more to those traditions, but I think you're getting my point. For Paul to use the word adoption was troublesome and probably a little scandalous in the Jewish tradition. Adoption was not something that was done often, and when it did happen, it was likely out of desperation or necessity. So for Paul then to say that this adoption is part of God's plan, to adopt the Gentiles into the family, it was something that had a lot of issues, a lot of restrictions. 
but it was something done in Roman culture. There are oppressors, there are occupiers. This was a new way of looking at it, a new way of understanding our coming into the family of God through Christ. He destined us for adoption as children through Jesus Christ according to the good pleasure of his will. Not an easy process. But it was a birth, a life, a crucifixion, a death, a resurrection that brought us into the family of God through our baptism into Christ. We are adopted into God's family. Christ, our brother, God, our father. We have talked about this before where I've talked about how easy it would have been for God to just snap God's omnipresent and omnipowerful, omniscient fingers and snap them and say, it's done. And welcome us all in. But this was a full-fledged family adoption. One in which we were chosen and could never be reversed. We became the family of God because of what our brother did for us. Paul says it a little bit differently in Romans. He says, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may be glorified together. Family means family. In the December 1998 edition of the Focus on the Family Bulletin, it was reported that according to a study of more than 500 family counselors, the following are the top traits of successful families. Communicating and listening, affirming and supporting family members, respecting one another, developing a sense of trust, sharing time and responsibility, having rituals and traditions. Our family thing is never easy in this life. But the love and connection that we have as a family can never be broken. And the love and connection that we have in the family of God can also never be broken because He chose us and in that choosing we cannot be disavowed. That all comes with the pitfall. Pride and the trap of self-depreciation. I think the point here I'm trying to make is this. There is a story of a tailor who was at work. He took a piece of cloth and a pair of shiny, costly scissors. He cut the cloth into various bits, then put the pair of scissors on the floor at his feet. Then he took a small needle and thread and started to sew the bits of cloth together into a fine shirt. When the spell of sewing was over, he stuck the needle into his turban. The tailor's son, who was watching the whole process, asked him, Father, the scissors are costly and look so beautiful, but you throw them at the floor at your feet. The needle is worth, worth almost nothing. You can get dozens for very little, yet you place it carefully on your head. Why do you do this? The tailor replied, because, my son, the scissors have their function, no doubt. But they cut, only cut the cloth into bits. The needle, on the contrary, unites the bits and enhances the value of the cloth. Therefore, the needle, to me, is more precious and valuable. We have value. Because we matter to God, adopted into his family, chosen and irrevocable. So whether you like it or not, we are family. Robert Or Orban once said, who can ever forget Winston Churchill's most immortal words? We fight on the beaches, we fight on the landing grounds, we will fight in the fields, in the streets, we will fight in the hills. Sounds a lot like our family vacations. Today, because of the baby in the manger, 
because of his life, because of his ministry, because of his willingness to go to the cross, to accept death, to bring us life, because of him we are family. We are brothers and sisters called to speak and to listen to one another, to respect one another, to develop a sense of trust, to share our time and responsibilities, to share our rituals and traditions. Today, let us take this idea of adoption to heart. Not only to accept the inheritance that comes along with it, forgiveness, redemption, eternal life, but also to be family in this life. Let us open our hearts. Let us open our minds. Let us open our eyes. Let us be family. For through Christ, that's exactly what we are. Adopted into God's family through the waters of our baptism. We are the family of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us join now in singing our hymn, The First Noel. Let us join together in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. In this new year, O God, make us joyful servants. Make the year ahead one filled with your joy and your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this new year, O God, make us joyful servants. Make the year ahead one in which we are not afraid to step out on the path you have laid before us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this new year, O God, make us joyful servants. We ask this day that you send your Holy Spirit to be with Evelyn, Chris, Helen, and Bernie, Jeff, Nola, Roger, Bruce, Bernie, Phyllis, and Sue, Jake, Lorraine, John, Carl, and Albert, Chris, Grace, Miles, Mike, and Steve, and all those others that we lift up before you now on our hearts or with our lips. Help them to feel the love and grace that you have for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this new year, O God, make us joyful servants. Make our faith in you strong enough to push away the doubts this world throws our way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This bread is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And now, gracious Father, as we prepare to come to your table, guide us always in turning our hearts towards you, humbly praying the prayer your Son taught us so many years ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Wherever you are, whoever you're with, this is the body of Christ, given for you. Take and eat. Wherever you are, whoever you're with, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We'll join now in singing our final song, We Wish You a Merry Christmas.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.